home look like home and be an efficient use of space. Creativity is a way of life for me. Every time I start a job with someone, I tell them that they're going to be surprised at the end. Menards is the box of puzzle pieces. When I get there and I'm working on a project, all the pieces of the puzzle come together with all the materials that are there. There's pretty much inspiration in every aisle. We've been going there so often that it's built a relationship that I know when I go in there, I'm going to get smiles from people. I started going to Menards as a kid with my dad while he was picking up materials for his jobs. I feel like Menards is on the same page with the family values that I embody. It didn't matter what I was creating. Menards has been there through all of my transitions in life. I think for a long time I was doing what I was expected to do. And then it wasn't until I got older that I started to do what I wanted to do. Every day I show up and give it my best because I have to. I owe that to myself. My whole life people told me I wouldn't be able to do and create as a career. And I never believed them. That gave me strength to go forward. Building is a way of life for me. It's who I am, it's what I am, it's how I express myself. To me, being a maker means an opportunity to build the way you want to build, building with heart. I try my best to do something you don't see every day. My kids always feel a part of every project we do. It's very important to us that they see how our hands created something and the value of hard work. It's not just about creating stunning spaces. I'm transforming the lives of the people who live in those spaces. That's what it's all about, really, is being able to take a chunk of wood and transform it into a piece that is going to be appreciated by somebody. It's something that was built out of love. There's no better feeling than taking a sketch drawn on a napkin and with a lot of design, man hours, materials, turning that into a building that people love. At the end of the day, when I look at a project, I feel like that I made a difference. There's a beauty in that. It starts from the moment you enter the court. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official when I was a senior in high school, 17 years old. I think it's the best decision I've made. You could play and you could make extra money on the weekends on the side, and why not? In life, Things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. You can get a lot out of it. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and young athletes who can translate those skills to officiating. So much of officiating is not necessarily what you do on the court. It's how you conduct business off the court as well. Being an official, sure, it's not easy. And if it wasn't for those difficulties, I don't think I would be where I'm at. Because it helped me become not only a better official, but a better person. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game. But the rewards always outweigh the negativities. And it's just been wonderful.
and once again, welcome back to Husky Stadium. We're in between games now, getting ready for the Class 2A Championship, but we are happy and delighted to have with us Ted Alston, who was the head coach at Polo High School. Of course, they win the eight-man championship in the state of Illinois. And Coach, talk a little bit about that. Quite a run, 13-0 this season. It was quite a run. You know, a uh, team that got better as the year went on. Uh, had a couple hiccups in the middle of the season with some COVID situations uh, with some other schools, but were able to recover from that and, and really played well, especially down the stretch. The eight-man concept really catching on throughout our area and our region. Talk about starting up a program. This is your third year. Some of the challenges starting of an eight-man squad. Yeah, well, eight-man started in Illinois in 2018 uh, with eight schools that, that were looking for an alternative uh, with declining enrollments and, and lower numbers of participation. So uh, looked at Iowa and Wisconsin for a lot of help. Had some coaches come speak to us. And biggest challenges were really just getting the community to understand that eight-man football is really just football. Right. Uh, and it's not some crazy thing like Canadian football or something like or that. Or arena ball. Or arena ball, yeah. <laughs> I get that a lot. Talk about the transition for your youngsters, the mindset of getting them ready and prepared to be productive and eight-man. Well, the year that we decided we were going to go, we were still 11-man, so what we did was we had our JV team uh, play actually an eight-man schedule to try to get them used to it. Uh, that helped a great deal, and, uh, you know, the, the rules really aren't much different. There's just a handful of rules, and, and so I think playing that year of eight-man really helped us moving forward after that. Who are some of the players you had this year really stand tall for you this year on the field? Well, we had three All-Staters. Uh, our quarterback, Tyler Merdian, uh, got hurt in the championship game, but but stuck it out, did a great job for us. And our two running backs um, did an outstanding job. Brock Salto and Avery Grenoble uh, both finished the season with about 1,400 yards. And uh, uh, Avery Grenoble in the championship game was, was an absolute beast for us. And we had really good offensive linemen and defensive linemen, too. You know, we just had a really well-rounded, outstanding team this year. All right, Coach, we certainly appreciate it. Congratulations on the great run, and good luck next year. Thank you very much. All right, Ted Alston from Polo High School, your eight-man champion in the state of Illinois. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll get you ready for that Class 2A championship coming up right here at Husky Stadium. Don't you go away. Other dealers want to tell you why to buy from them. At Bob Grimm Chevrolet, we want our customers, like Dave, to share the day they experience the Bob Grimm way. Everyone at the dealership was friendly and professional. A great experience from start to finish. Make 2021 the year you drive away in a Chevrolet the Bob Grimm way. Your car is more than just transportation. It's a gathering place. Your mobile community. At CephQ, we get that. So we offer car loans with great rates, flexible terms, and no hidden fees. We work with you to get the loan you need for the vehicle you want. Because getting there together is better than going it alone. CephQ, not a bank, better. Start your next project at Builder's Warehouse. We have over 15 colors of vinyl laminate flooring in stock, starting at $1.85 a square foot. Get it done at Builder's Warehouse on Southwest Washington Street or visit us online at bwpeoria.net. And once again, welcome back to Husky Stadium here on the campus of Northern Illinois University. Started off today here at 10 o'clock with a great matchup. Lena, of course, taking the Class 1A championship. Lena Winslow, the Panthers, and uh, they came out on fire and gave it a good try for four full quarters, and uh, they take home that Class 1A championship. And we're coming up on the Class 2A championship now, a game that everyone pretty much here is anticipating to be quite a battle indeed as we take on Nashville, the Hornets, and that wing T offense. They check in at 12-1 and one on the season, taking on the Wilmington Wildcats. Team likes to put the ball in the air a little bit, so it's going to be a little bit of a, a transition of a, you know philosophies on the field, mindsets offensively, but both defenses are going to have to come up strong and have some strong performances, of course, to hopefully propel their teams to win a state championship, and that's both teams' goals, of course, coming up in this matchup. 
big teams, big time players. They come up in big time games and big time situations. We'll find out which team will fit that bill in the Class 2A championship in just a few moments. We're going to take another short break. We come back. We'll get you ready for that Class 2A state championship right here uh, at Husky Stadium. Don't go away. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. It's here, the Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. Whether at the job site, the campsite, or at home, get power where you need it with this 4,500-watt generator on sale for $289.99. This three-burner flat iron griddle features 520 square inches of cooking space. Get it for only $219.99. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in store only while supplies last. Save big money at Menards. At Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Welcome to Husky Stadium in DeKalb on the campus of Northern Illinois University. It's time for 2A State football and the championship game today between Nashville and Wilmington. I'm Lee Hall along with Jack McInerney. This is game two here at Husky Stadium. We just saw Lena Winslow with the win in the Class 1A State Championship over Carrollton. We've got Nashville and Wilmington right now. And coming up later today, we've got Byron taking on Tolono Unity for the 3A state championship. That one's scheduled for uh, approximately 4 o'clock, followed by Sacred Heart, Griffin, and Juliet Catholic for the 4A state championship. We've got four more games for you tomorrow right here at Husky Stadium. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Wilmington and Nashville. Second verse, same as the first. We saw Wink T against Spread in game one. We're going to see it here today, too, in game two. Well, it's really kind of interesting. I mean, it's going to be one of those, as we saw the first game, a lot of excellent talent. They know how to run their particular offenses. And the thing will come down to who plays better defensively. And again, the line of scrimmage. Big games are won at the line of scrimmage. And I think sometimes people forget about that. But those guys up front that don't get any recognition, those are the real heroes. All right, Wilmington has uh, had a great year all year. Nashville got really hot the last three weeks, knocking off teams that were seated higher than them to get to the state championship game. We've got the kickoff coming your way from DeKalb. Don't go away. The 2021 IHSA Football State Finals is brought to you by Layuna. Start your career in construction today at layunacareers.org. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Third generation union labor. Uh, love fishing and hunting. And, uh, love construction. Uh, all the benefits, the insurance, uh, the pay. Well, it's given me insurance that I've got for my kids. I've The money I make, I've been able to go on vacations when I want to. Together, we made it through one of the most challenging years in our lives. Together, we helped our schools and students achieve great things. We all partnered and struggled and overcame together. Because we know together, we can do great things. Now, we aim to be better than ever. We are IEA, the Illinois Education Association, and we all are stronger together.
We are just moments away from Wilmington and Nashville. Let's go downstairs for an update from Donnie Tillman. All right, thanks, Lee. This should be an interesting contest as well in this Class 2A state championship game. And for the Nashville Hornets, they will rely on their talent, obviously, on offense and defense, but their special teams could come through as well. They have a kicker by the name of Eduardo Garibay, who is actually a foreign exchange student. And I'll tell you what, he was kicking from about the 50-yard line, well, from 50 yards out, I should say, and was hitting the crossbar in warm-up. So if it comes down to special teams and it comes down to Eduardo, he could be the difference in his contest she was against St. Teresa, so we'll see if uh, he gets that opportunity here in a Class 2A state championship. I'll send it back up to you. All right, Donnie. Yes, Eduardo did hit the game-winning field goal against St. Teresa last week in the semifinals from 34 yards with 3.9 seconds left, so he is uh, a big hero in Nashville, will forever be remembered there, and it will be Wilmington kicking off here, though. Nashville won the toss, and they will receive. Isaac Turner and Ben Reed deep for the Hornets. Alan Richards will kick it away for Wilmington as we are about ready to get underway here in 2A championship football. It one hops Isaac Turner. And he's hit hard at the 34-yard line. I believe that was Cameron Cutter on the tackle. So it will be Nashville from their own 34. The Hornets 12-1 on the year. A 6 seed. They were ranked ninth in the last poll. Wilmington, number one in the polls and a number one seed coming into today's ball game. Colton Gajewski is the quarterback he hands it off first play goes to connor gladson he picks up a couple on first down colton gajewski throwing for over 2,000 yards this year 21 28 as you can see there 28 touchdowns just five interceptions and he's run for another 683 and 10 yards Gladson nowhere to go that time. A host of Wildcats bringing him down at the line of scrimmage. It'll bring a, actually, it was a loss of a couple, so it will bring up third down and nine. You saw the defensive penetration right there by the defensive lineman, and that allowed the linebackers to come up and make some plays, and that's a good start to the ball game for them to make two good stops early. And in motion, Gajewski back to throw the left-hander. A wobbly throw is picked off. Ryan Bannis with the interception. It was a, a wounded duck that came out of the hands of Gajewski. Looked like one uh, maybe got away from him here on the cold day. Well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, this could actually turn into be a punt, more or less if they can stop Wilmington here. But you're right, that looks like a punt as well as came out as looking like one. Not a good start right off the bat for Nashville. Early turnover, we saw turnovers a problem for Alina Winslow in game one. They overcome them, overcame them, I should say, to win the game 38-25. So Wilmington now in the wing tee to start things off, Jack. Championship teams take advantage of turnovers. We'll see if that's the case. The give is to Jacob Friddle. <laughs> Jacob's a 6'2", 185-pound senior. Colin James is the leading rusher. Jacob Friddle's not far behind him. Carson Hansen is the fullback in this wing tee. Well, this is what makes it difficult to stop this particular type 
of uh, deep or offense. We saw this in the first game, the wing team type, but see, they have more balance. They have two running backs. They have both over a thousand yards, so that really gives a lot of balance to the wing team. The pitch is to Friddle. He's wrapped up close to the line of scrimmage. Caden Gajewski with the stop there. He is the twin brother of Colton, the quarterback. This is kind of a variation of the wing T. You've probably seen this particular type of offense run by Navy, Army, and Air Force. And it used to start out with Georgia Tech. They start out with the two wings, not necessarily in the backfield, but right off the edge of the tackles. And they go in motion, and they can redirect. But it's basically the wing T and or basically the T formation type of offense. A lot of misdirection, a lot of movement. Third and three. Here's the give to Colin James, his first carry. And he's going to be about a yard short. Colin James, 5'7", 153 pound sophomore. And he is, <laughs> he's fun to watch. I mean, he will get lost in a scrum and bust out and run for the uh, touchdown. Well, that can happen if you saw who he ran behind there. He ran behind two <laughs> two guys that are over 6'3", and weigh over 260 pounds. Now, Wilmington's offensive line averages, I did the math, 227 pounds. That is a pretty big offensive line for a T 2A football team. Fourth of the yard. Give us to Friddle. And he's got it down to the 43-yard line. Pick up of six on fourth of the yard for Jacob Friddle. 1,313 yards and 18 touchdowns on the year. You can see there's a variation of the wedge blocking where the left guard just pulled a little bit, but they all wedge blocked down. Everything is real short and condensed. It's not wide open. They play small, small splits, which that means between each lineman, and then they just power you down the field. And I remember one of the coaches saying this week that it's tough to find the running backs when those splits are that tight. It really is, especially when you have big, tall linemen. And you can see the splits right there. They're almost foot to foot. First down from the 43. James was going to be the ball carrier, but there's a whistle. Wilmington 13 and 0 out of the Illinois Central Lake. Play to the snap. Full start. Number 58 offense. Five yards. First down. What we're talking about splits is the difference between how far each lineman is from each other. In some cases, they're a little wider. They could be a, a foot, two feet, which creates larger gaps than for the running backs and sometimes almost creates a hole just by how they spread out. But it also then gives more penetration for linebackers if they're blitzing or whatever. We played about four minutes here. Give it to Colin James. There he is getting lost among the linemen and then falling down to the 39-yard line. Pickup of nine. It is kind of interesting to see how close everybody is together. And you'd think, well, nobody can make any big runs out of that kind of a formation or get through that kind of line of scrimmage. But what happens is... They just power everybody in there. The quarterback is one of the leading blockers. You'll notice when he pitches the ball, he just makes a pivot, pitches, and he leads up up into the hole. There's the Wilmington starters. There's the big guys up front. Sanford, Hopwood, Benson, Dingelo, and Imhoff making this offense work. Here's the give to Friddle. He gets down to about the 36-yard line. Bring up third and three for the Wildcats. This is the third title game for their program. They were first in 2014, second back in 03. On the Nashville side, they made it to the 2A title game two years ago. Lost to Sterling 35-14. Now this is really kind of an interesting offense because of the fact that the splits are so tight which are basically foot to foot. We've seen camera work from the end zones that show you that. And then the fact that when the quarterback pitches the ball, when he's pitching, he's rotating right in to be the lead blocker. Give us the James, not much there on third down. Teams like this are usually four down teams. They have complete confidence in what they can do as far as running the football. 
And so much depends on that offensive line. Well, they have to dominate. Sanford, Delgino, Emoff, Benson, Hopwood. Fourth and a couple, eighth play of the drive as you get a look at the defensive starters on the Nashville side of the ball. Isaac Turner and Ben Reed, safeties and pretty good receivers on the other side of the ball. Gives to Frittle. He's still on his feet, down inside the 30, down to the 29 for the Wilmington first down. Sooner or later, I guess they'll break out. Quarterback leads the play right there. The guard pulls around. And they just get so many people at the point of attack that it's just a kind of a, a wedge just going to push you off the line of scrimmage. And if there's a seam or anything else, that's where the back ends up sliding through. But initially, all they want is three or four yards. Anything that's after that is pure gravy. We asked Jeff Reince about his offense and uh, his offensive coordinator played for the legendary Gordy Gillespie who had a little success at Juliet Catholic and St. Francis University might have heard of him well, Alan James on first down for a yard what's interesting to me about Wilmington is the fact that four of his top assistants have been with him for 28 years in that's that something. program that's just absolutely amazing Reince is in his 28th year, 250 career wins coming into today. And again, you can see they're controlling the clock, controlling the chains. Nothing fancy, just coming at you, try and stop us. Six minutes plus on this drive. Second down and nine for the Wildcats. 25th straight playoff appearance in those 28 years under Jeff Reitz. Colin James. Down to the 22. Now that's the Pick first. Six. Excuse me. That's the first play where they've tried to go outside. Everything's been inside in this entire drive. And they get you so conscious of squeezing in and squeezing in. And all of a sudden they pop it outside on a little sweep and try to get the edge. You know. Coach gets asked all the time about, about running this offense. It's uh, old school. He says, you know, we believe in it. Our kids believe in it. And the community believes in it, too. We've always run it, and it's just clicking a little more this year. Now, they do change certain aspects of it year to year based on their talent. Third and three. Friddle gets through the gap, and he's going to go. Friddle from 19 yards for the score. And that's what we talked about with uh, Colin James, and we saw it there from him. He just kind of gets lost in the lineman, and then boom, he finds that last gap, and he's gone. Well, what happens is the, the secondary and or the linebackers can't find the ball clear. Watch where the gap is. It's just on the bounce right here. Everybody squeezes inside trying to find the ball, and it's tough to do when you got that many people so close to each other. That's just a mob scene right there, and he breaks out of it into the end zone. And again, the balance that they have coming from either side with two backs that have had over a thousand yards that creates tremendous balance, puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Alan Richards on for the extra point, 50 of 55 in that category. It's up and good. 7-0 the lead for Wilmington, 13-0. Jacob Friddle with the 19-yard touchdown run, his 19th TD of the year, and the Wildcats are up early on Nashville. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. 
It's here. The Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. Relax in style with this heat and massage rocker recliner. Only $249.99. Stay warm this winter with this 54-inch electric fireplace. It can also fit up to a 65-inch TV. On sale for $219.99 after rebate. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in store only while supplies last. Save big money at Menards. 7-0 our score. Wilmington the early lead. Jack, let's take a look at your keys to the game. Well, you know, we talk about team depth, depth being a factor, with, especially when you're going 1A and 2A with so many kids playing both ways. But it's, it's a situation where they're in, in great condition. Then who can adjust faster? Now, right now, it's obvious that Nashville's going to have to make an adjustment based on what we just saw on that drive by Wilmington, how they run that offense. And then at the end, team discipline. You know, who's going to bite and make a mistake? And all of a sudden, Wilmington throws the ball and or... You know, there's a penalty in a key situation. Where do those penalties occur? It's not so much when, it's where they occur and in what situations. Very quick moving first quarter as Wilmington has dominated it with their run game. Alan Richards kicks it away. And it's Isaac Turner from his own seven. It's a flag as he's dropped at the 24-yard line. 17-yard return. We'll wait on the penalty here. Both of those kicks looked closer to breaking away than they initially, initially were. Goes against Nashville. Like we said, penalties, where do they occur? You know, it's one thing if a penalty occurs in midfield. It's another thing if a penalty occurs down here, now it backs you up. And, and then you give your other team good field position, so penalties are a big factor in where and when. All the way to their own 12. Gajewski will keep and get back to the line of scrimmage. And that's about it for Gajewski, who we mentioned has a run for 683 yards this year. He's a big guy, 6'6", 210 at quarterback. Second down now and another flag. False start will go against the Hornets, so... They have gone the wrong way since right, the kickoff right return. Full start, number four offense. Half the distance to the goal, second down. Well, when you have an offense like Nashville has, so much depends on personnel. And, of course, when you have a quarterback, your offense revolves around him in the spread formation. And he gives you 215 yards of total offense at this position. So you've got to have a kid that's able to do that. Oh, Gajewski's throw intended for Turner. It looked like he had it, but it squirts out as he hits the ground. Now, you know, something else that it's probably a minor point to some, but not to coaches, is that this quarterback's a left-hander. Now, you might have gone through 12 games facing a right-handed quarterback, and so adjustments need to be made as far as how you're rushing and where you're rushing. Gajewski out of the pocket, throws into double coverage there. Ben Reed, the intended receiver, but there were two purple shirts right on his back, and that'll bring up fourth down. Nashville went the wrong way and unable to get out of that hole in their own ends or uh, own territory. Rather. And now we're talking about the penalties we talked about where and when they occur right here. So that penalty was crucial because now they're going to have to punt and give Wilmington excellent field position for their second drive. Quick kick from Gajewski. He just barely got it away. It does take a Nashville roll, but this is going to be great field position for Wilmington as they'll take over at the Nashville 44. Seven nothing. Our score early. Wilmington with the lead and the ball when we come back.
I couldn't ask for a better agent, for a better company, in a disaster where you have no idea where to start. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team. There's people that are going to watch out for us and they care. It's been pretty stressful. Once we saw Lori and got our plan, it's... Uh, like a huge weight lifted. Jacob Friddle, the man for Wilmington here in the early going. Here he is on his touchdown run from 19 yards, and he puts Wilmington on top early. And you mentioned that uh, two or three pronged attack back there in the uh, Wilmington backfield. Well, in many cases, as we saw in the, in the very first ball game, there's usually there can be one big running back star. But in this case, there's two outstanding running backs that are very, very good. And here's the other one, Colin James. Picks up maybe a yard. Colin James, Walter. Devin Nolhoff in on the stop there for Nashville. One thing too, Lee, with both of these running backs, it's not, it's some of them have big size and great speed. These two are just very consistent. For example, Colin James is only 5'7", 155 pounds, and he's a sophomore, and he's got 1,300 yards. On the other hand, you're looking at Friddle, who's a senior at 6'2", 185, so he's the bigger back, and he's got 1,300 yards. He averages about 100 yards a game. Same for Colin James, 105 a game. That's great balance. Second down, it's James. Flag on the play as he's brought down at the 30-yard line. Pickup of 11, but there are flags back at the 40, and you would anticipate that going against Wilmington. But it could be offsetting here because the second flag that no, came in. flag I, here at the end. Yeah. yeah. I think could have been a horse collar. Yeah, these offenses are kind of interesting. I mean, Wilmington averages 300 yards. We had fouls on both teams. Holding offense. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Penalties offset. Replay second down. Well, here's a good job of... There's oh, the hole. There's the hole, and then the cutback, and then you're going to see the face mask right there at the end. Ooh, he got all of them and spun them around. Good cutback. Oftentimes, when you get a cutback like that, it does lead to a face mask because the, the uh, defenders are reaching out, and they're caught off guard when you cut back on them. Gosh, there's some great camera work going on here. Second down and seven. Here's Friddle. Gets down to the 36-yard line. Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. We're under a minute to go here in the first quarter. You would imagine that Wilmington games go pretty quickly. Well, statistically, Ryder Mentz, who's the quarterback, as you see, lead on every play. He's like a lineman, but he's wearing a a backs number with number 12 on it. He tosses the ball and leads up into the hole. He's only thrown the ball 10 times this year. Yeah. For 51, 51 yards in one touchdown. And that had to be a play action, I would assume. Third and a long two. Here's Friddle. He's not going to get there. Nashville line getting a good push there to bring up fourth down. Now, I don't know if Wilmington has in their repertoire off of this the bootleg 
which would be very effective because teams just start flying to the ball here, backside pursuit. They just go to the ball immediately. We've already played a quarter. Only score of the game is Jacob Friddle from 19 yards. Wilmington on top by a score. Do you see the world the way I do? My mom says I play too many video games, but what she doesn't know is that I'm actually making more money than she is as a YouTuber. Lacey, do you know why there's a new car in the driveway with a bow on it? You're welcome, Mom. At OSF Healthcare Children's Hospital of Illinois, they see the world the way I do. They put kids first, with care designed just for me. Builders Warehouse is home of the one price covers it, Quartz Countertop. Don't be surprised by fees, be surprised by Quartz Beauty. Quartz Countertops, get it done and get it done right at Builders Warehouse or start planning at bwpeoria.net. If you are currently working in the electrical industry and you're not receiving great wages, benefits, including guaranteed retirement income, paid health care, dental, vision, 401k, and more, we have positions open now with IBEW Local 34. Be a part of the electrical team on the front lines of the electrical revolution. Join us on the cutting edge of training in new electrical technology. Contact us today at IBEW34.org. Other dealers tell you why to buy from them. At Bob Grimm Chevrolet, we want our customers, like Brittany, to share the day they experience the Bob Grimm way. Best experience I had buying a car, and I will definitely come back in the future. Make 2021 the year you drive away in a Chevrolet, the Bob Grimm way. The IHSA, committed to keeping student-athletes safe. Through educational initiatives and national partnerships, we're going the distance to develop safer protocols for our teams. Plus, we continue to improve scheduling and conditioning to reduce injuries from preseason through each state championship. 31 sports, 350,000 student athletes, and one goal, player safety. The IHSA, the future, plays here. The 2021 IHSA Football State Finals is brought to you by Illinois State University, where the total cost is in the lower half of Illinois public universities, and recent grads earn $12,000 more than the national average. Create your legacy at Illinois State and by the Illinois Corn Growers Association. Meet the families that make up 96% of Illinois farms and learn how Illinois runs on homegrown corn at www.watchusgrow.org. You are looking at the campus of Northern Illinois University, Husky Stadium. We played 12 minutes, and it's a, a close score, 7-0 Wilmington. But uh, Wilmington with 9.57 time of possession out of 12 minutes, and the yardage difference, 71-1. to 1. So this is exactly Wilmington's kind of game through 12 minutes. Well, the clock, the chains... Controlling the ball. That's what this offense is all about. Jacob Friddle with the only score of the game for uh, came for Wilmington, 19 yards and a 7-0 lead. Wilmington has the ball, fourth down and a long yard. Different look there in formation wise. And Colin James doesn't get there. Raiden Schwartzkoff in on the stop. 6'2 senior. Look at he got around the block and holds him short. It'll be Nashville ball. Textbook tackle right there. What a time for it. So the Hornets take over possession of their own 34. Hand off if it's the Gladson for a little or no gain. Let's go downstairs to Donnie Tillman. All right, thanks, Lee. I'm actually hanging out at the water cooler right now, but the team doesn't actually use the water in this cooler. They actually use these little water bottles that they uh, hand over to the water guys, Declan and Bryson. Is that correct? All right, so the water boys here, make sure that these individual water uh, containers to make sure they stay hydrated throughout the game. I'll send it back up to you. A good COVID practice to have your own water bottle. Pick up of about three. There's a flag. Thanks, Donnie. Personal foul, 
15-yard face mask, number 20 defense. 15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. See if we can see this here at the end of the run. He's cutting back. There's your cutback. Yeah, there There's your face mask. They're reaching out. And again, we mentioned this will happen sometimes on cutback runs. Gajewski to throw. Ooh. Had a man, but overthrows him. Ben Reed was open, but it's a little too tall for him. That'll be second and 10. Gajewski 0 for 4. As we mentioned, thrown for over 2,100 yards coming into this season. He's got a really a strong arm based on what we just saw there. He averages about 16 throws a game and completes 10 of them for about 163 yards a game. Gajewski on the keeper. And he picks up about four. Steve Kasuzic, his head coach, said that uh, Colt was a little unpolished in the summer, but he's come a long way. He's learned a lot about pre-post reads, and uh, as you alluded to, he can throw a pretty mean deep ball. 6'6", 210, so he can, he can fall down and get two yards. Schwarzkopf was the man in motion. The handoff is to Gladson, and nothing there. Alan Richards, the team leader in tackles, okay. the stop. It's going to be fourth and six for Nashville. Well, good penetration here by the defensive front of, of Wilmington, Sanford, Hayes, and D'Angelo. Play action there. It's complete to Isaac Turner. And he outruns the defender, Isaac Turner, 40 yards on the touchdown catch from Colton Gajewski. And Nashville is an extra point away from tying this game. Well, he got him out on an island, top of your screen right here, right there. Gets a seam on the inside leverage on the corner. The safety was way up. He's all by himself. Just a slant route. Good throw, good catch. And good execution. The formation is what made that touchdown by getting him way out on the wide side of the field all by himself. Eduardo Garibay, the semifinal hero with the last second field goal for the extra point. And it's good. And we are tied at seven. That was touchdown pass number 29 for Gajewski. Touchdown catch number 20 for Isaac Turner. That was really a nice route by Turner. Get an inside position. You would talk about Yak, yards after catch, and he's a perfect example of that. He averages 17 yards a catch, and there's a perfect example. He got great inside position. There was no topside help by the safety. He was just man up by the corner, so when he ran that slant, if he caught it, there's nobody there to make the tackle because the safety was on the other side of the field. So by formation, that set that play up, and Turner's catch and consequential touchdown. Well, this is the fourth straight game that Nashville has come in as an underdog. They uh, have beaten three straight unbeaten higher seeds. They beat, uh, beat Bismarck Henning, a three seed in the second round. They beat second seed Pena in the quarterfinals. And last week they knocked off number one seed St. Teresa in the semis to get here. And they are facing another higher seed here today in Wilmington. That's an amazing stat. You talk about getting here the hard way and deserving to be here based on what you had to go through to get here. You we played two minutes here in the second quarter. Sorry, you Jack. almost think it's it's fate that they should win this game based on all the people they've knocked off. Well, I'm sure the Nashville fans are uh, feeling that way. We know some of them are... Uh, a little tailgating today down in Nashville, enjoying this one. He really enjoyed that last play. Here's a little onside kick, and he goes out of bounds. So Nashville trying to make something happen here with the onside kick. Garibay. Well, they tried to catch him napping, but all they did is give him good field position. Couldn't tell if Cougar Forsythe got a hand on it or not, but it goes out of bounds and it will be 
Wilmington ball. They'll start from their own 43. We're going to get a look at Colton Gajewski, the quarterback, who is also a defensive end. You don't see that a lot. Usually quarterback, the linebacker, maybe a safety, but defensive well, he's end. He's 6'6", six, 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 210. Right. Yeah. So, of course, we saw it in the last ball game. Pullman was the outstanding defensive player and offensive player. Give us to Carson Hansen up the middle, and he's got about seven yards. Illinois State University's total cost is in the lower half of Illinois public universities. Recent grads earn $12,000 more than the national average. Create your legacy at Illinois State. Lee Hall, Jack McInerney with you here at Husky Stadium. Donnie Tillman on the sidelines. And Tony Cornish Jr. also with us. It's uh, a pretty good football day here. It's a little chilly, but not much wind to speak of. You can smell the hamburgers cooking in the air. It's just a great football atmosphere here today. Jack McInerney's here. I mean, what else could you ask for? <laughs> Second down and three. Give us to Colin James. And he falls forward pretty close to the first down. We'll see where they mark it. Well, he ran, and he fell into Isaac Turner, and just that was like hitting a wall. Watch this. Boom. It is a first down. Wilmington gets a lot of people at the point of attack, and that's with pulling linemen and also with backs leading the play. So they get usually anywhere from two to three people leading up into the hole. Sometimes it gets a little contagious. Contagious. Gets a little... <laughs> stuffy in there but they make yards there again is the same play Hanson the fullback with the carry picks up a couple this this reminds me I watched a, a documentary a couple weeks ago about you know you remember the do you believe in miracles 1980 US hockey team well it was about the Russian team that lost to the US and the man that kind of uh, created the Russian style of hockey and it was all flowing and a lot of movement and that's kind of what this offense reminds me of there's just a lot of almost ballet like movement and coordination well interesting point because when I talked to uh, coach Reitz about this they start running this in the junior high yeah so they know this program coming all the way through high school and coming up from the junior high pitch to Frittle he gets well, he turns it up. I thought he was going to go outside. He turns it up and gets down to the 40-yard line. Pick up a six. There he's going to the outside. As you mentioned, he should have cut up. Now, what's interesting about a lot of these schools, the ones that are really successful are the ones that run the program, the same plays defensively, offensively, as far as down at their lower levels, freshman and sophomore teams, and even in the junior highs, and even the Pop Warner teams in some of the communities to keep the continuity through the entire program coming up. Well, and, and Colin James played junior league with Frittle and Hanson, his two mates in the backfield, so they've been running this and running it together since they were little kids. Wilmington 1-4 of four on third down, pitch to Frittle, and he looks to be very close. Frittle up the middle. Congestion, congestion. That's the word I was groping for before, but you can see it right here at the point of attack. A lot of congestion there. Frittle was just short. It'll be fourth down and very short for the Wildcats. Tied here at seven. Now they were stopped on one of these plays in the first quarter by good penetration by Nashville. This is a perfect spot for play action pass. Of course, they only throw the ball twice a game, so this might not be perfect time. Colin James gets behind those big fellas up front and has the first down and more down to the 35-yard line. Big push on that left side. Nick Sanford, Drake Imhoff over there making room for Colin James to sneak through for the first down. It really is tough defensively to stop this. Look how tight everybody is. They all block down. And then when you have the quarterback leading and the lead back, you can see how that tackle blocked down. Well, you'd say, well, there's... There's nobody blocking that defensive end. Yeah, there is. They got the quarterback coming. They got the halfback coming. They got the pulling guard coming. So there's a lot of people leading the ball carrier up into the hole. 
First and ten now for the Wildcats from the 35. Pitches to Friddle. And he gets a couple. And those plays, I think I, you've said this, Jack, and I just want to point it out again. Those plays don't look like much, but it, it's going it, to it leads to something down the line to a, you know, to where they think they're going to go to that, and they give it to somebody else, and they break something. Right? Exactly, they'll come back with a counter of some sort or whatever. But at this point, they're just running at power football now. For them, a big play could be running it on the outside, not necessarily a pass play, mm -hmm. but instead of running in between the tackles, which is their normal running plays with the wedge block and everything else and the schemes that they have, if they bounce it outside to the edges, that's a big play for them. Give it to Frittle and nothing there. Nashville reads it well. Colton Gajewski in there on the tackle. Now, in some cases, there's nowhere to go. This play happened so quickly, and it was a counter, but there was no quickness to it from the standpoint of the defense fast flowing to the ball because it happened so quick. Didn't have time to go with the first fake, and the ball was right there where they are. That's probably, now for one that's probably the only disadvantage, Lee, of having those close splits like this is it doesn't spread out the defensive linemen and the linebackers at all. Ninth play of the drive here on third and eight. Reed squats low, flips it to Colin James, who gets dragged down. Isaac Turner. Very close to a horse collar, and that's kind of what James was thinking. Oh. Grabbed by the helmet. Ooh, that's dangerous. And obviously something like that is not intentional. His hands started up right. by the shoulder pads, but then they kind of end up because he started twisting on him. Well, that was a turnover that they needed. Fourth down now. Alan Richards. Averaging 30 yards a punt. Bad snap. Manages to get the kick off. It's a short one, as you might expect, and out of bounds near the 12-yard line. 3.01 to go, second quarter. Wilmington and Nashville all knotted up at seven. At Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. We know it's difficult to decide where to invest first each year. But your farm and family depend on it. We want you to have your most successful season yet. And that's why we've cataloged over 12 million corn plants and 20,000 germinating seeds. Whether you're just beginning to monitor equipment performance or fine-tuning your equipment, our dealers are here to help. This is your year to know that you're doing the best you possibly can for your farm and your family. Back at a chilly Husky Stadium here in DeKalb. Game time temperature this morning was about 22 for our first game. Give you a little update. Oh, it's all the way up to 28. It's downright balmy. No wind to speak of, though. So what a factor that is. Pretty good football day here. Wilmington 13-0. Nashville 12-1. Nashville's first loss came early in the year, week two. against Freeburg. They lost 26-21. They haven't lost since. Well, a number six seed against the number one seed. First down, Gajewski dragged down for a loss of a yard or two. <laughs> Oh, 
Second to 12 now for the Hornets. And a whistle and a flag from the far Five side. Encroachment. 66 defense. Five yards. Still second down. This is the headache of all coaches, having a penalty without running a play. You know, if you're going to have a penalty, let's have it during an aggressive movement, but not on a dead ball. But the ball's not even snapped. Don't give them free five yards. So now it goes to second and seven. Gajewski back to throw. His defender fell down, but... What a catch. Out of bounds, but what a catch. Hauls it in, but he was out of bounds. The defender fell down. He was wide open. What a catch at the end of this. Too bad Turner didn't turn it up field, but it was he had to go to where the ball was, but he was wide open. Puts it right on the money. Except it was out of bounds. As our old friend Denver Johnson would say he was wide open like a kid late for school. Third and seven. Gajewski looking downfield again and again over the head of Ben Reed. He's thrown two balls to Reed. He was open on both of them, and they were both over his head. So it'll be... It will be fourth down. They hadn't switched it yet. I thought it was fourth down. Fourth and seven. So it'll be Gajewski to punt. He doesn't take a very deep drop on this punt, does no, he? No, he's almost had the other, other two blocked by not doing it. And it is blocked. Blocked. And recovered that time by Hunter Hayes. Now, part of the reason for that, you might say, well, why isn't he further back? Because sometimes they might not have a center that can snap it far enough back for him to be able to do that. I think Carson Hansen is the one that got the block. Number 22, and it's Wilmington ball with a very short field when we come back. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 70 courses, including more than 30 free courses, such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. To learn more, visit the NFHS Learning Center. Nashville and Wilmington tied at 7 with 2.15 to go here in the second quarter. Coming up at halftime, well, we've got first half highlights and stats, the Menards game summary, and we'll take a look back at Jack's keys of the game and see how those have played out here in the opening 24 minutes. A blocked punt for Wilmington has them set up with excellent field position and 2.15 to try to get into the end zone. Do championship teams take advantage of opportunities? And this certainly is an opportunity. And is this a championship team? We're going to find out pretty soon here. They will start at the Nashville 18-yard line. Pitches to Friddle. Sneaks his way down to the 11-yard line. Pickup of seven. So far, Jacob Friddle has been... Uh, Carrying the mail for the Wildcats, 67 yards. Again, just that wedge blocking up front, that offensive line just doing an outstanding job. You get those big kids. I mean, they're 227 pounds up there. Nick Sanford, Dominic DiGiolo, Drake Imhoff, Brody Benson, Kate Hopman. They do a great job up there. And if you look where the fullback is, if you've ever seen a fullback this tight, Pitch again to Friddle. 
He gets a couple, maybe. Clock still rolling. Both teams with three timeouts. Their full complement. Having a fullback that tight to the line of scrimmage is like having another blocker. Rather than having five offensive linemen, you have six with him right there. Then that quick toss, and the quarterback is leading up. Now it creates seven blockers all within the line of scrimmage and tight to the point of attack. I've got a question for you. I'm not sure we're going to have time to get to it here before the half. Metz keeps it himself. Ooh. And muscles his way down inside the five for the first down with under a minute to go. Watch Kate Hoppen right there, number 62, get out in front. 6'3", 260 pounds. And he just contributes to the movement of that offensive line. See the surge right here. Good job by the running back, but also that offensive line. Sorry, that was James. That was a, faked me out on that one. Colin James on the carry. So James makes it first and goal from the four. Time winding down. The pitch to Friddle. He's marked down at the one-yard line, maybe inside the one with 20 seconds left. And now we'll get a timeout. Watch everything right here. Quarterback in, fullback in. Everybody's trying to squeeze into that one door. And that's a small door to get all those big bodies in. That was a timeout for Wilmington. We hope you're around for uh, game one today. It was a good one. Lena Winslow with the 35, 38-25 win over Carrollton. Of course, we're tied here, seven all, with just 19 seconds to go in the second quarter. Coming up next, our good friends Dave Bernhardt and Mark Lindo will have the Byron Tolono Unity matchup for you in 3A, and then wrapping up tonight with Sacred Heart Griffin and JCA Julia Catholic, the Hilltoppers on the Cyclones. And tomorrow we've got five through eight A, so more football coming your way on this holiday weekend. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Nineteen seconds left. Wilmington a yard away from going on top again. I got a feeling I'm going to run off tackle on this one. Good emotion by one of the wings. Like I said, quarterback sneak. Metz takes it himself. Gets behind blockers, maybe gets a little push from Colin James. And the Wildcats go back on top. Okay, Ryder Metz right there for the touchdown on the quarterback sneak. He gets three points in my book. The other three points go to Nick Sanford, Dominic Diljo, <laughs> Drake Imhoff, Brody Benson, and Kate Hopwood. They're the offensive linemen right there that are doing all the dirty work that got them down the field and into the end zone. When you have an offense like Wilmington has, it's all part of what the line of scrimmage happens. Flags before the kick. Right to the snap, full start, 62 offense. Five yards, redo the try. Well, that'll make it a little more interesting. Now, that was Kate Hopwood, who's usually pulling on most of the plays off of the line of scrimmage. He maybe didn't realize it was a kick and was trying to pull. <laughs> He's just focused. I used to have trouble with that in school. So that will make this extra point 26 yards. And it's plenty of leg and good from Alan Richards. He's now 52 of 57 for PATs and 8 of 9 for field goals this year. So he's a pretty big weapon. Keep that in mind if it comes down to that for Wilmington. They take the 14 to 7 lead here with 16 seconds to go in the first half. Twenty-fifth straight playoff appearance for the Wildcats. Twenty-nine years for Jeff Reitz. What a great job he's done with this program in Wilmington. His staff's been together for 27 years. And that conference over the years has gotten stronger and stronger. With Marengo and, and uh, Cole City in there and Lyle and Streeter and Latino. 
And of course, in the first couple of ball games, they they did not have a real difficult schedule. And I don't mean by that as far as who they played, but as far as how they went through that schedule. They were they were kind of waltz. I don't want to say waltz through it, but I will say they kind of waltz through that schedule and uh, ended up being a number one seed in 13 and 0. It's always interesting. There's a couple of different coaches that I've talked to said that they've had their best teams for this past spring. And I thought, how sad is that? When, for example, Loyola up in Chicago were number one seed all year long. And John Halsek said his best team that he's had there in 18 years was the team he had in the spring, the seniors. But all they got to play was six games. And, I'm, and that happened to many, many schools sure. all over the state where the most they could play was six games and might have been the best class that they had of seniors, and it was never fulfilled. And Reed fields at his own six-yard line. It's out to the 25 and 26 before he's dragged down. Ten seconds to go here. You would expect would maybe just take a knee here, but they might try to throw something up, get a pass interference call. We'll see. The thing is, it's going to be tough for them to make any adjustments at halftime because there's not a, thing, a lot of things to adjust to. Let's give it to Gladson and get about three yards. And that will be the end of the first half. Pretty close one here. Friddle with a 19-yard touchdown. Gajewski to Turner for 40 yards for Nashville to tie it up. And then Mentz just ran in the one-yard touchdown for a 14-7 game here at the half. It's certainly nothing more than we thought it was going to be as far as Wilmington kind of dominating the chains in the line of scrimmage and the time of possession and how much opportunity was Nashville going to have to to use that somewhat potent offense but uh, Nashville or excuse me Wilmington's really been uh, very successful in that first half all right so let's go downstairs to Donnie Tillman all right thanks Lee I'm here with coach uh, business as usual that first half uh, great game, you know. My head's off to uh, Nashville. They're, they're playing great. We got a heavyweight battle going on here. Uh, we've been able to control the ball a little bit. We got to watch the big play. Uh, the, the Turner kid for them is an outstanding kid. Uh, great game right now, but a great game. But a couple of big plays turned into points for you. Talk about that. Yeah, no, I think I, I, you know, we just kept hammering away there a little bit. I thought our offensive line uh, has done a good job for the most part. Uh, you know, we're going to have to make some adjustments at halftime and then defensively uh, a few things too. But uh, uh, well, great game. You know, it's a state finals game, and uh, this is what it's all about. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. All right, guys, thanks. All right, guys, send it back up to you. All right, Donnie, thank you very much. Wilmington undefeated coming into this ball game. They jump on top from Jacob Friddle. And then Colton Gajewski up top to Isaac Turner. Wilmington adds a touchdown. They lead it by seven at the half. Leaving the house, not easy. When you need health care that's easy, you need OSF On-Call Urgent Care. When and where you need it, in person or online, OSF On-Call Urgent Care. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official. It's the best decision I've made. In life, Things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. You can get a lot out of it. If you're an athlete, 
We need people like you and translate those skills to officiating. To help me become not only a better official, but a better person. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. And it's just been wonderful. Roommates, not easy. When you need health care that's easy, you need OSF On-Call Urgent Care. In person or online, OSF On-Call Urgent Care. Back into DeKalb, and it's a 14-7 lead for Wilmington here over Nashville. Lee Hall, Jack McInerney with you upstairs here at Husky Stadium. And uh, you mentioned it's kind of what we thought. Uh, Wilmington controlling the time of possession, controlling the ball. Nashville really didn't have too many chances. Uh, Gajewski's only completed one pass. That was for a touchdown. Well, the, the adjustments they'll make is find a, finding a way of getting to that secondary and throwing the football a little more in the first half if they did or rather in the second half. Wilmington doesn't have to make a lot of adjustments offensively. They're going to have to make a few in the secondary because they know that Nashville is going to come out throwing the ball in the second half. So they're going to have to make some adjustments as far as their secondary covers. They're doing a good job up front, though. We talked about keys to the game earlier. What, what do you think of, of those to this point? I think everything so far has been pretty good. I, I, you know, the line of scrimmage is is, is kind of being controlled. And uh, the depth, both these teams have, have outstanding depth from that standpoint as far as conditioning. And who makes the best adjustments? We're going to find that out when we come back here in the second half. Team discipline has been pretty good. Who has the fewest penalties? There's been a couple in key situations, but who then takes advantage of them? They've been pretty good with that so far. All right, that'll do it for us. Let's go to Tony Cornish Jr. We'll see you back here with second half action. Tony? Thank you, gentlemen. Certainly appreciate it. Pretty exciting first half in my book. A defensive battle, as we expected, in the trenches. We thought it was going to be one there. The battle goes on. And right now, the offenses are just trying to go for what they can hopefully try to develop. And it's been a little bit of a non-opportunity for either offense, really, to get into any type of rhythm on the field right now. And again, that's a credit to the defensive staff who have worked, worked up a great game plan right now to stop these offenses, these high-powered offenses that can be explosive and put some big numbers on the board. But expect more changes in the second half. Wilmington, hey, they're number one for a reason. Watch for them to make some adjustments. Big-time players on that roster. They could come up big with some, uh, you know, a little bit of trickery or something. Misdirection, we'll find out in the second half. Right now, we're going to take a short break. More from Husky Stadium is coming up in just a few moments. Your car is more than just transportation. It's a gathering place. Your mobile community. At CEFQ, we get that. So we offer car loans with great rates, flexible terms, and no hidden fees. We work with you to get the loan you need for the vehicle you want. Because getting there together is better than going it alone. CEFQ. Not a bank. Better. It all starts here in the woods of Illinois. Walnut, hickory, oak. Individually selected and harvested for your home. Each tree, each log, milled to perfection. With the same attention to detail for two generations. It's not just wood. It's Corsaw hardwood lumber. Grown in Illinois, made in Illinois. Corsaw hardwood lumber. Just west of Canton, on Route 9. My part-time service in the Army National Guard makes it possible for me to be more for the community I call home. I'm a better neighbor because my service has taught me how important it is to be a team player. My training helps me in my classes when I must give attention to detail to the task at hand. My service in the Army National Guard allows me to keep my community and those I care about safe from threats. Learn more about how you too can live and serve part-time close to home by visiting nationalguard.com. Dig the pig, dig the pig from Butcher's Pizza. Locally made with the finest ingredients, the frozen pizza with the just made taste, the quality pizza that your family deserves. A quick meal you'll be proud to serve. Dig, dig the pig, dig the pig from Butcher's Pizza. 
And once again, welcome back to Husky Stadium. Happy to have you with us here. Class 2A game is underway. And uh, right now, we've got a battle out there, Donnie. And I tell you what, we're looking for Nashville to do some things. But uh, watch out for Wilmington. They're number one for a reason. That's right. And they've actually keyed on a couple of plays that really got them the lead so far. A tip ball turns into an interception. A block punt turns into points as well. So right now, Wilmington rolling off of a couple of big plays. Wilmington, a wide open offense. We thought they'd throw it away. The weather conditions, you think that has something to do what's going on today? And you know what? They're staying warm because they're staying compact in that, in that offensive formation That's true. right now. That's true. Defensively, of course, both teams come out strong. That's a credit to the defensive staff who have watched the tape very carefully come up with a great scheme. That's right. Both teams are really, you know, keying in on the ball, making sure that they get to the tackler. Really not that many big plays in this game, but nonetheless, it's the Wildcats who have really uh, jumped out to the lead in this contest. And uh, for Wilmington, you know, business as usual. As for Nashville, another comeback in store possibly, just like last week. We'll see. We will see. And talking about that, you talk a little bit about uh, game summary action. We want to bring that up for you first from Bernard's, our Bernard's game summary. Look at the first downs. Uh, we have two for Nashville, six for Wilmington. Rushing yards. Donnie, your thoughts? 113 for Wilmington, 12 for Nashville. I'll tell you what, Wilmington, again, just doing what they normally do as far as keeping it on the ground. You see that big zero where the passing I yards see that. is? I that's, see that. That's been the case for a lot of the season. You know, they really don't pass the ball too much, but they definitely key in on the run. As far as Nashville goes, you know, they're going to try to mix it up as much as possible at they need to move the ball. They need to put points on the scoreboard because time will not be their friend in the second half. 0-4 oh and, and third down conversions for Nashville. That's got to change. And, of course, time of possession right now. Wilmington dominant in that area. It's going to be interesting to see. A game of adjustments right now. The defense gets an A on both sides. That's right. And, of course, as you mentioned, the time of possession, that's going to wear on Nashville a little bit. If they can't get the ball away from uh, Wilmington, if they keep running the ball and, you know, keep playing smash mouth football, it might make it tough for Nashville to come back in this one. But you never know. We still We've got a lot of time in this contest. All right, we will see. We're going to take another short break. We'll have more from Husky Stadium coming up. Class 2A Championship game, second half, is headed your way in just a few moments. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. It's here, the Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. Give the gift of power and performance with this Master Force Boost 20-volt brushless oscillating multi-tool kit. Just $119. Plus, get a free bonus toolbox. This 22-foot aluminum multi-position ladder can be positioned in five different ways. Only $139 after rebate. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in store only while supplies last. Save big money at Menards. At Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. We know it's difficult to decide where to invest first each year. But your farm and family depend on it. We want you to have your most successful season yet. And that's why we've cataloged over 12 million corn plants and 20,000 germinated seeds. Whether you're just beginning to monitor equipment performance or refine tuning your equipment, our dealers are here to help. This is your year to know that you're doing the best you possibly can for your farm and your family. And once again, welcome back to Husky Stadium here on the campus of Northern Illinois University. It's a cool and brisk day, but hey, it's football and things heat up. The action is surely heating up on the turf right now at NIU. Class 2A championship. We're at halftime right now. 14 to 7. Wilmington is in front. Let me show you what happened in the first half of action. Touchdown run. That was a 19 yarder here by Jacob Friddle getting Wilmington on the board. Uh, nice play there. 7 0 Wilmington at that point, but watch out. Here comes Nashville. Nice touchdown reception coming up right here. 
Yeah, <laughs> big play by Kelton Gajewski on the throw and Isaac Turner on the catch. Number four celebrating getting his team in this game. It's a 7-7 game at that point, but Wilmington comes right back. Short touchdown run right before the half to get them on the board at 14-7. They lead by seven going into the halftime locker room. A game of adjustments. That's what we're expecting in the second half. Right now, both defenses playing well, curtailing offensive charges by both sides. Tough getting a rhythm for that offense. Might be the conditions here. A little bit chilly. Quarterback's hands may be a little bit cold, but we'll find out if that changes in the second half. We'll be back with more from Husky Stadium in just a few moments. Together, we made it through one of the most challenging years in our lives. Together, we helped our schools and students achieve great things. We all partnered and struggled and overcame together. Because we know together, we can do great things. Now, we aim to be better than ever. We are IEA, the Illinois Education Association, and we all are stronger together. Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> This broadcast is copyrighted by the IHSA, the NFHS Network, and Gray Media Group Incorporated. Any other use of this broadcast or internet stream without the express written consent of the IHSA, the NFHS Network, and Gray Media Group Incorporated is strictly prohibited. And welcome back to Husky Stadium again. 14 to 7 is your score here in the Class 2A Championship. Wilmington leading by 7 over Nashville. We expect a lot of fireworks in the second half. And the gentleman that will bring you all the second half action, Lee and Jack are standing by in the booth right now. Gentlemen, take it away. All right, Tony, thank you very much. 14 to 7, our score here at halftime. Wilmington leading over Nashville. The Hornets getting stretched out for the second half. And Jack, uh, along with the Wilmington offense and their ball control offense, defense was kind of the star of the first half for both teams. Well, you know, it really was. And, and we'll get to that as we look at the, the breakaway right here that defensively can only stop Wilmington for so long. And, and this is what, what was able to happen for Nashville. And uh, Wilmington had only two of seven third down attempts, which is kind of amazing for a run team. So Nashville's done a nice job of playing defense. And then if you turn it the other direction, there's been turnovers. And uh, Nashville has been only able to, they've had actually no first downs at all on third down. They're 0 for 4. And when it comes to fourth down, they only completed one pass on fourth down for a touchdown. So what does that tell you? I mean, it's amazing the defenses both of these teams have played. Wilmington has kind of grinded out a little bit more and have had the procession going. Let's go downstairs to Donnie Tillman. All right, I'm down here with Coach. Uh, what did you tell your team in the uh, halftime break there? Uh, just don't panic. I mean, they've been in this situation before. We were in it last week. You know, we were down one score going into halftime. Um, obviously, we did not execute on offense very well um, in the first half. There's stuff there. We just have to take advantage of it. Um, and de defensively, instead of holding them to the fourth and one, we need to see if we can get it to fourth and three, fourth and four to give ourselves a better chance to get them off the field. With a couple of plays, you know, kind of set you back a little bit. But still, as you mentioned, uh, Ben, don't break, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, there's no time to panic. We are in this game. Um, we just it, It's huge that we come out and get a stop and not, not allow them to go up two scores. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. All right, I'll send it back to you. All right, Donnie, thank you very much. Steve Kazuzek in his fifth season as head coach, 41-11. and 11. 
He is an 04 alum, a three-sport athlete. His wife is also a Nashville alum. She played softball. And she played basketball for our good friend Wayne Hari, who has uh, spent quite a bit of time at state himself, took the uh, girls' team to seven, or check that, eight uh, state uh, finals at Redbird Arena, uh, one state championship and uh, three other trophies, and then took the boys' team to Peoria a couple years ago as well. So uh, the Nashville folks don't, don't travel too far, husband and wife, a couple of Nashville natives trying to bring Nashville their first ever state title. They were here two years ago, so the program's been going in the right direction. Now they just, as Coach said, they need to, to take advantage of what's there here in the second half. I always find that so very interesting, Lee, when we do these 1A and 2A games and the communities that are a little smaller, how many people have had family members involved in their programs? Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's brothers, right. sisters, dads, uncles, aunts. Yeah. It's amazing that the, the amount of people are all involved in such a family in a community. It's, it's just terrific. We've done, in addition to the basketball, I remember doing a, a Nashville softball title game. So uh, great athletics, great community uh, of Nashville. They will kick it away here to start things off. And taking it at the 25 yard line is Carson Hansen. And he is brought down at the 44. So good field position for the Wildcats here to start the third quarter. This is just a pretty good effort on his part right here. Combination of good effort and poor tackling by Nashville. And that's something they cannot afford to have happen. Again, when you have a team that gets good field position, that's a ball control team. This is one of those scenarios that they love because they can take up the chains, take up the clock. And before you know it, the third quarter's over. Here's the pitch to Frittle. He's out near midfield on first down. Carry number 16. I was just going to say he has really been uh, carrying the load here offensively, getting most of the carries for Wilmington. That's a great camera shot right there because you could see all of the movement on that offensive line coming at you. They pull all kinds of people in the entire backfields coming at you at the point of attack. They get so many bodies at the point of attack. It's just a surge that comes after you. It's like a tsunami. <laughs> I think I had that for lunch the other day. <laughs> Fried or breaded? Or grilled, I think. Grilled. Yeah. Give to Frittle. And he's still on his feet. He's got a first down and still driving. And brought down at the 40, a pickup of 11. You'd think at 185 pounds, he'd be a little more brittle. But I'll tell you what, Frittle can really pound the ball. He does not go down easily. Did you mean that brittle is not frittle? That's frittle exactly is not brittle. what I meant. Okay. All right, he is, uh, he's been the focus so far for Wilmington. He had 127 yards in the quarterfinal win over Bishop Mack. Having a big day here, 88 yards so far and a touchdown. First and 10. Here's the pitch to James. He's going to bounce it outside to the 30, where he's knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line. A pickup of 13 for Colin James. He says, don't forget about me over here. Don't forget about me, and he's really the guy with the speed, and that's very rarely that they've gone outside. I think they did it twice in the first quarter and then didn't go back to it at all. But this play right here was the adjustment that they obviously made at halftime. We've been pounding it inside completely in between the tackles for the first quarter and a half. Let's start moving it outside a little bit, then come back inside. A little more versatility as far as outside and inside with the offense. Another first and 10 for the Wildcats. Here's the pitch to Frittle. Brought down from behind. Devin Schill with the tackle. Most teams talk about their versatility be between the run and the pass. Let's have a little more balance. Wilmington looks at the versatility being let's run in between the tackles and run it outside a little more versatile. Oh, 
Two minutes gone here in the third quarter. Wilmington with the seven-point lead and looking to add to it here. The sun starting to set here in DeKalb. A brisk, bright day after Thanksgiving. Here's the give to James. Going to try to bounce outside again. Does. I think they're going to get Hanson for a hold. Now James, the ball carrier. James gets down to the 14, but there was a flag. I think Hanson guilty of holding maybe out there. Yeah, that's going to be the spot right there. But again, the adjustment by Wilmington. It's not let's throw it ball more. Let's get outside more. Holding 22 offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Second down. They did get Hanson on the hold out there. Now this is where it's tough. You can see right there the hold. This is where it's tough for a team like this to be able to get younger yardage because they don't throw the ball. But what happens is they do run the ball for four downs. So it gives them basically an extra down to get that extra yardage. Coming off a 324-yard rushing game against Tri-Valley in the semis. Here's Friddle inside the 30 to the 28. About a yard short, a yard short of a first down. <laughs> One coach that faced Wilmington this year talked about their offense and said they just execute that offense like it's their job. It's a well-oiled machine, and obviously they don't miss a beat. That's a pretty good description. It sure is. It sure is. And I got a kind of a, a kick out of uh, Coach Reed saying that we didn't operate at 100%. Well, in the first half, what was it, 99%? They looked <laughs> awful good, but that's like a coach. Never satisfied. Third and 11. A little reverse flip from James to Friddle and sniffed out by the Nashville defense. Ben Reed with the tackle for loss, and it'll bring up fourth down. This just took a lot more time to develop, which allowed the secondary and the linebackers to make the adjustment. Good pursuit right here coming up and making plays. Ben Reed. Good shot of Ben Reed right there. Number three, six foot four, 175 pound senior. Made a real good play right there defensively. Alan Richards for the field goal attempt. 47 yards. Kick is up. It's going to be short. We went about 40. And Nashville will take over at that spot. Take another look at it. His long on the year was 46. This was for 47. But it might have been earlier in the year when he was a little warmer, and that makes a big difference. <laughs> You know, yeah. when, you're, when you're kicking at a temperature when it's 80, your body's warmed up and everything else. And you can see the wind had no effect whatsoever. That great American flag right there is not moving at all. Nashville from deep in their territory. Gladson with the carry. Meet the families that make up 96% of Illinois farms and learn how Illinois runs on homegrown corn at www.watchusgrow.org. Second down for the Hornets, about eight to go. Gajewski looking to his left and maybe a pass interference potential call there. It was intended for Turner, but he uh, ran into the Wilmington defender. No flag on that play. Well, Wilmington has given a little look of double coverage toward Turner's side. You can see the corners right there on the outside hip, and the safety is coming up on the inside. And the ball's just a little bit overthrown. Third and eight. Gajewski looking to his right. And overthrows the intended receiver, Ben Reed. It'll be fourth down. He's really throwing the ball high 
on all the passes to the outside. Gajewski now one of nine on the day. That one completion, a touchdown. Of course, the last time he punted, it was at this end, and it was blocked. And again, he's not very deep. Mm -hmm. It's like five yards. Actually, now, now he's a little deeper. Gets that one away cleanly. Fielded at the 41. And dropped after a gain of just a couple. Was Ben Reed on the coverage. We've got 6.17 to go here in the third quarter of our 2A state championship game. It's Wilmington with a seven-point lead after a great tackle here by Ben Reed. Do you see the world the way I do? I'm kind of an artist. I take random things around the house and make them into the most amazing sculptures. Evan! Do you know where all the spoons are? At OSF Healthcare Children's Hospital of Illinois, they see the world the way I do. They put kids first with care designed just for me. Seventeen to go here, third quarter. Wilmington with a fourteen to seven lead. Back and forth, a tightly contested game here so far. But Nashville just unable to get anything going offensively. Jack, I think what happens is Wilmington's doing exactly what they wanted to do, and unfortunately Nashville cannot do what they wanted to do. They wanted to come out in that second half and throw the ball more, and they have, but. He's not been very accurate throwing the football. Wilmington ball with their own 44. Good field position here. They've only scored twice, though, so Nashville has kept themselves right in at the give to James. Is good for maybe a yard. Colin James is on third. James scat back. Of course, we've seen him go inside with it, too, so... Bust it up the middle or kick it outside either way. It's hard to believe the yardage they've been able to put up all year long by both these backs when everything seems to be so constricted at the line of scrimmage. You wonder how anybody could ever break away on any of these runs. And there's hardly any movement whatsoever at the line of scrimmage. Second and nine. Here's James. Oh, and dragged down by Isaac Turner. Oh, what a play for Isaac Turner. Coming from his defensive backfield position and dragging down Colin James for a loss. Well, some of the plays in the secondary can afford to do this because they know they're not going to throw the football. So you can take these kind of chances and send your secondary on, on basically linebacker blitzes knowing they're not going to throw the football. Rushing yards so far in this game, 150 for Wilmington, 14 for Nashville. Fake to James. What was that you said about them not throwing? Metz was trying to. Now he's flushed out of the pocket and dragged down from behind by Wyatt Kwiatkowski. Oh, they're going to get a flag on that one right there. Did he? Boy, that sure looked like taunting to me. Wow. Mercy. Let's see the end of the play here. Made a heck of a play. He sure did. And then the after the play, I don't think they were exchanging the pleasantries. Well, it doesn't appear to be. Maybe he was asking him what's going on after the game. All right. Meet before we get on the bus. I don't know. 
Well, at any rate, it brings up fourth down and a punt. Just the second punt for Wilmington. Allen Richards at his own 25. It's a low liner away, and that's liable to take a pretty good bounce, and it's touched there about the 21-yard line. And Nashville will take over. 3.44 to go in the third. It's a tight one here. Wilmington with a one-touchdown lead over Nashville. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Back in DeKalb, 344 to play here in the third. It's a close one, 14-7, Wilmington. There's some fans oh, guys. A good view of the I hope, they're, I hope they're going south. <laughs> they thought they'd play over. They heard there was a good ball game going on over here in DeKalb. You know why there's more birds on that one side than the other, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm a city guy. <laughs> Play action here, double coverage, and it gets the flag. He turned around and he was double covered. And Ryan Bannis and Colin James were there, and it's a pass interference call against Wilmington. Well, that adjustment was made at halftime that Wilmington was probably going to double cover him. Pass interference, defense number 14, 15 yards from the previous spot. Down. But that was a good job by Turner of forcing that interference because he had no chance for that ball, but he stopped right here like he was being forced by those defenders, which he wasn't. So I thought this is a pretty good job on his part. That was pretty good pass defense by the secondary. Give to Glatz, and we haven't said his name much. He gets the corner here, and he's dragged there out about a yard short, and that's going to be a horse collar against Wilmington. So a couple of calls going against the Wildcats here. As Gladson made a good run and then gets a horse collar tackle at the end of it. And as we've mentioned before, can they take advantage of these opportunities? Penalties in certain situations, depending on where they are and when they are. Personal foul. Take another look. He starts up at the shoulder, and then he ends up coming around the top. There's the shoulder and almost a little bit of face mask. Good call by the officials. That was only the 11th rushing attempt for Nashville in this game. First and 10 now. Gajewski flushed out of the pocket. Rifles one downfield intended for Turner, but incomplete. Ryan Bannis there on the coverage. Will be second down. Well, I think one of the things that Wilmington might have thought, talked about at halftime and made an adjustment to is that Gajewski is not a great runner but he's a really pretty good passer. So what I want to do is force him out of the pocket. I don't want him to be comfortable in the pocket being able to look over the field and be able to throw it downfield. Let's put him on the run. Second and 10, Gladson with a carry. Might have been a face mask there. He gets down to the 36 yard line. No flag though. Picks up about three. Gladson this year, they called him Mr. Inside and Ian Blazier, Mr. Outside. We haven't seen any carries for Blazier yet and very few for Gladson. 
Third down and seven. Play action. Gajewski looking deep for Turner, and it's over his head. And it'll be fourth down. Again, Gajewski seems to have a lot of time in the pocket. Pretty good job of coverage right there. Most of his throws, I wouldn't say most of them. I'd say almost all of them have been overthrown. Not underthrown, but overthrown. Fourth and seven. Twin receivers to the near side. Coach Kazuza changes the call. Six on the play clock. Ayeski feels the pressure. Gets it complete to Turner at the 30. He's going to be very close. He's going to be marked down right on the 29. That's where the yardage stick is. Looks like okay, close. <laughs> Nashville is indicating first down. We will see. Good pass here by Gajewski on the run. Boy, he barely got that off, but a good job of getting back to help the quarterback out, knowing where the first down marker is. They're going to yeah. have to bring it out again. When they marked it initially, it looked like he was, he had a first down. Now it looks like he's maybe a little short. That'll be a big turnover if he is. Wow. Just short. Wow. Difference in the game right there can be a half an inch. You never know that 20 years from now when you're at the reunion. Now the old cliche jumps up to Mike Nashville. The game of inches goes against them there. That was just his second completion. Is that correct? Both on fourth down, both to Turner, courtesy of our statistician Nick Pinto, the always accurate young lad from the Chicago area. Most of those descriptions were correct, except for the young <laughs> part. Wilmington takes over now. Pitch to Friddle, still on his feet. As he crosses the 35, and that's where he's brought down. Pickup of almost six for Friddle, who has had a pretty nice ball game here for Wilmington this afternoon. He really has, and the thing is that that first down is so critical for a team like Wilmington to get four yards, and he ends up getting six because that falls right into their game plan and their and their type of offense, the point of attack. Get five yards on first down, and that's exactly what they've been getting. 99 yards in this game for Jacob Friddle. We mentioned he had, uh, he had 117 last week against Tri-Valley. He had 127 the week before against Bishop Matt. So he's been on a little bit of a roll here for the Wildcats. He gets it again, and it's so deceptive because he gets to that line and into that mix, and it looks like that's going to happen. And then the next thing you know, he's five yards downfield. Well, it's hard to make a tackle when you're in that miss because you can't get your arms out and around everybody because there's so many people jammed in there. I mean, it's just, uh, to me, it's amazing how many people are at the point of attack in the line of scrimmage. When you look at it, there's five offensive linemen that have their feet right next to each other. Then there's four defensive linemen that have their feet right on top of those guys. That's nine. Then you bring up the linebackers, and then all of a sudden you throw the quarterback in, and then the fullback who's right there. All the things we're missing are the spectators in the stands. Wilmington two of nine on third down. Friddle. And he's going to be very close. And I believe he's just short. Now that play is a perfect example. Look at all those people jammed in there. That quarterback pitches it so fast, and the moment he turns on it as he's pitching it, he's pivoting so he can get in and lead the block. Fourth and less than a yard for Wilmington here. Final seconds, third quarter. One second difference between the game clock and the play clock. Metz gets yeah. the first down on the keeper. Whenever there's a quarterback sneak for a first down, you got to give number one, you got to give credit to the, to the center. And that's Drake Imhoff. And then you can actually give credit, credit to the two guards, then Jinoff and Benson. 
Fresh set of downs for Wilmington when we come back. 12 minutes to play, at least. 14-7, top seed Wilmington on top of Nashville. The upset-minded Hornets need a big defensive stop here. Hi, John Coker of Builders Warehouse. These are some of the cabinets I have in stock and ready for immediate pickup. An unfinished, a slate gray or white. Get it done at Builders Warehouse on Southwest Washington Street or online at bwpeoria.net. Great careers begin with Nika and the IBEW. Earn as you learn and learn from the best. The electrical trades offer a great future. Nika and the IBEW's 23,000 square foot training facility gives you real world practical experience. You are working and taking classes. It's the best of both worlds. My education is being paid for and I'll have zero college debt. Healthcare, a great pension. You really can't do better than working in the electrical trades. Your future starts here. Nika and IBEW Local 34. Other dealers tell you why to buy from them. At Bob Grimm Chevrolet, we want our customers, like Russell, to share the day they experience the Bob Grimm way. Efficient with my time, better experience than any other previous dealerships. Make 2021 the year you drive away in a Chevrolet, the Bob Grimm way. Your car is more than just transportation. It's a gathering place. Your mobile community. At SethQ, we get that. So we offer car loans with great rates, flexible terms, and no hidden fees. We work with you to get the loan you need for the vehicle you want. Because getting there together is better than going it alone. SefQ, not a bank, better. The IHSA, committed to keeping student athletes safe. Through educational initiatives and national partnerships, we're going the distance to develop safer protocols for our teams. Plus, we continue to improve scheduling and conditioning to reduce injuries from preseason through each state championship. 31 sports, 350,000 student athletes, and one goal, player safety. The IHSA, the future plays here. 12 minutes on the clock, the fourth quarter about to get underway here as Wilmington and Nashville battle it out for the 2A state championship here in DeKalb. We're here at Husky Stadium on Black Friday and back again tomorrow. Four more championship games tomorrow. It's Byron and Tolono Unity coming up in the 3A championship to follow this game. Pitch to Friddle. And he's out to the 45. Pick up of about four. And you talk about Ryder Mints, you know, and... and talking to uh, Jeff Reitz about him. He's like, he, he's just a conduit. He runs this team, but he can audible at the line of scrimmage, even in this offense, and change the play at the line of scrimmage. Changing the play is one thing. That's kind of a stretch. Changing direction is not a stretch. Okay. In other words, if you're going to run the play to the right or run to the left, he can have that audible if he sees that they overshift and the linebackers have slid over. He can change that play and make it go to the right instead of the left. But to change the play completely is a little more of a stretch for them. Here's the give to Colin James. Gets through to the second level and brought down. Probably a touchdown saving tackle by Quentin Laquasto. 6-1, 170-pound junior, number 88, with a big play there defensively to save a touchdown. I think he could have gone if it wasn't for that tackle. No doubt about it. He comes out of that, that mush pile right there. And a game-saving tackle right there, there's no doubt. Good job at the, at the point of attack by everybody. When you're talking about blockers for Wilmington, it's not usually one guy that throws a great block. It's everybody. First and 10 at the 40. James gets the pitch, gets behind his lineman. And down at the 37 yard line. He's had a nice, solid game. He's not really the guy that's been the breakaway guy, but he's had some key runs for him. It's been Friddle today that's really been the, the, the big go-to guy through most of the ball game. Now we've 
watching a lot of tape of him, and uh, <laughs> he is a great breakaway runner. We almost saw it there. The further he goes, the faster he gets. So if he gets to that second level, it's very rare that he gets caught like that. Second down and six. Here's the pitch to Friddle. He picks up a yard or two, maybe. Down to the 34-yard line. This explosive Wilmington offense, we saw what they were able to do against Sterling Newman. They had 431 yards in the first half. Well, again, it's uh, give what they'll give us and take what they won't give us. And that's what Wilmington has done. I mean, they, they've run the ball inside continually, and the big plays have been once they pounce it outside the tackles. Third and four, ninth play of the drive for the Wildcats. It's Friddle. Ooh, he escapes one tackler, gets by another, and he's in from 34 yards. Jacob Friddle, his second touchdown run of the game. An almost exactly mirror image of his first touchdown of the ball game. That little short toss sweep. He gets in there and breaks out from nowhere, man's land. Some poor tackling. And he just does a great effort getting down and into the end zone. Look at all the people at the point of attack. He just breaks through there. They seal everybody off. He finds that seam and gets into the end zone. He got through Turner's arms, and Schwarzkopf made the shoestring attempt, but he evaded that, too. If you ran both of his touchdown runs, they would have both looked exactly the same. Richards on for the point after. And that makes it a two-score game. Jacob Friddle, a 19-yard touchdown in the first quarter. A 34-yard touchdown run here. And look at his day, 143 yards. That's his high in the playoffs this year. From what stats we have, let's... Here we're looking Take at look Friddle. At that. Yep. Offense. All, all the people coming after him. He goes down there, but he doesn't go down all the time. Just keeps his legs constantly moving. And he's just hit. This is why you see him so many times in the replays. He's carried the ball 26 times, and he's been effective in the short game, and he's been ineffective when he's broken it for the touchdowns. Just been a workhorse with 26 carries. Jacob Friddle with the touchdown that makes it 21 to 7. Nashville had been hanging in right there with them, but that makes it a two score game. Still plenty of time to play, 9 05. And as you mentioned, Lee, I, I thought that that Nashville was kind of getting back, but there was a little momentum starting to come a little bit. There was just a, like a little feeling in the air, yeah. something about the things that they were doing that looked like they were going to get back, and all of a sudden, their back or momentum was certainly broken by Friddle's run right there. Turner fumbles the kickoff, picks it up in the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. Whew. Well, he tries to catch it sideways, and that's not how you can catch a kickoff. And again, in high school football, you cannot run it out of the end zone, and the ball goes into the end zone, and the ball is automatically whistled dead right there. Could have been a lot worse for Nashville. Definitely, if it would have bounced forward. Isaac Turner dodges a bullet there, and the Hornets start from their own 20. Gladson tries to find a gap, and there isn't one. No gain on that carry. The Wilmington defense stretching him out to the sideline and not allowing him to cut up field. It's been a frustrating day for that young man. As effective as Wilmington's offense has been, the defense has been very, very good. Second down and 11, and it's uh, going to be encroachment against Wilmington. Prior to the snap, encroachment, 44 defense, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards, second down. 
Brendan Moran got a little anxious there. Whether it's football or Star Trek, you got to stay out of the neutral zone, Jack. Second and five now for Nashville. Schwarzkopf in motion. Gives to Gladson. And a little bit of an opening there. He gets four yards. Bring up third and one. Well, to get back in this ball game, I don't think they're going to get back in it on Gladson's feet. They're going to have to get back in it on Gajewski's arm. That's for 0 for 6 on third down, and I'm not sure... I think he's 0 for 7 now. Yeah, he might have lost a little bit. It'll be fourth and a yard. Well, this is the play that uh, Nashville's been very effective on early on. The only pass that he had completed in the first half was a touchdown throw on fourth and one. Nashville's got any hope of staying in this one? Uh, I don't think so. Gladson just stuck at the line of scrimmage, and Wilmington will take over as their defense stands strong. Wilmington leading it 21 to 7, 7:34 to go, and the defense commanding respect here today as they turn it over on downs. It's here, the Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. Power all of your devices with this 30-pack of double or triple-A batteries. They're just $3.98 after rebate. A bath set is the perfect gift to give this holiday season. These Dove Men's and Axe bath sets are just $7.97 each. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in-store only while supplies last. Save big money at Menards. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of Title IX, the IHSA is sponsoring a 50 for 50 matching gift initiative on Giving Tuesday. All proceeds from the drive will be pledged to the IHSA Foundation, which annually provides scholarships to Illinois high school students selected to be a part of the All-State Academic Team. Visit IHSA.org on November 30th for more information. Lee Hall, Jack Bernhard with you there. Here, a big stop there for Wilmington. And they've got the ball, a 14-point lead in a short field. They've been called a lot of things, but never Bernhard. <laughs> McInerney. Geez. Oh, man, I turned into Harry Carey. <laughs> Without the salary. <laughs> Minus the salary. And the restaurant. And the major league deal. And the restaurants. Yeah. And the millions. Friddle. Takes it down to the 25. This Nashville team, and we, t we talked to Coach Kazuzek earlier in the week. He said, our objective is to be diverse and spread the ball around as much as we can. And we didn't see that diversity today with the run game and the pass game. The pass game, for the most part, wasn't there, and neither was the run game. No, there's no doubt about it. Wilmington really did a great job defensively. And uh, they tried to get the ball to Turner, but... They did it one time effectively, but after that, they started doubling them up. There was nothing there. And early on, Gajewski was overthrowing every throw that he made. So, uh, Wilmington did a great job defensively. Here's Friddle. Still on his feet and brought down by Turner after a run of 10 yards. And it's a first down for Wilmington at the Nashville 15. I'm almost surprised that what Wilmington has done today, based on what they've done coming into this game in 13 games, they averaged 45 yards, excuse me, 45 total plays a game for 300 yards. Well, that, to me, is 
is kind of interesting, but because that was just play 50 right there, so they're five plays over with six minutes left, and they certainly control the clock. They average 34 points. They're not completely there yet, but they've kept their opponents down to 10, and they've kept their opponent today down to seven. Riddle again. Down to the 12. In many cases, Lee, when you see teams that are undefeated and have great records, everybody talks about the offenses that they have. They rarely talk about the defenses, but on the defensive side of the ball for Wilmington, they only give up 65 yards a game running to opponents. They only give up 108 yards passing to opponents. So that averages to 173 yards of total offense they give up in a game. And teams usually only run about 41 plays against them. So that's a pretty darn good defense that Wilmington has. Second and seven. Whistles before the play. And that's going to be a false start against the Wildcats. And false start. 62 offense. Five yards. And here's a look at that Wilmington defense holding Nashville to just seven points in this game. Well, we, we saw this early on. It was kind of a duck coming out of the backfield, but pretty good coverage. You need to be where the ball is, and that's exactly what Wilmington defense is. Some good game tackling right there. A short drop on that punt. Good penetration. The ball's blocked. Wilmington takes it off in great field position. And then right here, they just make the big stops. A couple of big stops on fourth and short. Wilmington came up, made the stops, and has taken advantage of field position. And Carson Hansen, their linebacker, said, when talking about their defense, said, we don't get on each other. We just fix problems. We trust each other. And that's the biggest thing. And it's been uh, a huge key for Wilmington as you look at, uh, you know, they, they didn't give up very many points this year, that's for sure. Second down, Friddle. Down to the 13. Kind of got a kick out of right there. I was kind of watching the quarterback, who's, as, as I've mentioned many times today, he's kind of the lead blocker. But right there, he tossed the ball and he let up, but it almost looked like he let up to get out of the way. And he's got all those big linemen and that fullback coming in behind him. And at 160 pounds, he might need to get out of the way. Riddle now with 30 carries compared to Nashville's 28 plays overall. That kind of tells you something about Wilmington's defense. And it looked like Nashville had a problem with substitutions, so they'll have to call timeout here with 402 to play. Timeout, Nashville. Well, earlier today, it was the wing T offense of Lena Winslow running to their fifth state championship, a 38-25 win over Carrollton. The wing T of Wilmington leading Nashville here, 21-7 with 4.02 to play in this one. Coming up next, we've got Tolono Unity and Byron. Dave Bernhardt and Mark Lindo will have the call of that one. And that's followed by Sacred Heart Griffin and Joliet Catholic. A combined 25 and 1. That will be the final game of today. We'll be back tomorrow. We've got Jack and I have 5A football, Kankakee against Fenwick. And then we've got Kerry Grove against the explosive East St. Louis Flyers in the 6A game. That 6A game is amazing with East St. Louis. I mean, they could play with anybody. And ironically, they tried to. They went out of state they twice. Did. Yeah. They went played with a California team one time, and then they played with a, a Florida team the other time. And those were the only two losses they had. They beat everybody in Illinois, but they That's couldn't right. beat anybody out of there. But both those get... teams play, that he, they played were ranked top two teams in the country. Here's a give to James another flag. Now, IMG, they played IMG out of Florida. That was a false start. And IMG usually is noted for basketball. Yeah. But they uh, have an outstanding football program also. They were number two in the country, I think, when East St. Louis lost to them. And then 
they just IMG just lost a big game last week to a top 20 team. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of good football left this weekend here. And I want to say the other one was St. John Bosco. I don't know if that's right. No, I'd like to have some Bosco right now. Bosco. James. Schwarzkopf doing all he can to drag him back, but he got down to the 15. Very close to the original line of scrimmage. And it'll be fourth down. A little counter coming back. And we haven't seen much of that today. We've seen mostly the power football. Nothing too fancy. Well, probably only about the second or third counter play we've seen all day. And with the counter, the way Wilmington runs it, now you'll see Joliet Catholic tomorrow. They run it a little differently, and a lot of teams run it a little differently because they spread out more. So there's more action going on. But it happens so quickly with Wilmington that there's really no movement by the defense because it happens too quick for them to even react to the first move. They wait for the play clock to get to one and call timeout. Does Wilmington? 3.05 left to go here. You look at Wilmington and, uh, you know, they played pretty much a 3A schedule. I mean, I know that's a pretty narrow line of demarcation, 2A to 3A, but. Well, sometimes depending on where you're at, uh, geographically, you don't have a lot of choices. Mm -hmm. Depending on conference size and the schools that are in the area. Otherwise, you got a lot of traveling to do. Now, they're just outside in the western suburbs of Chicago, and those teams that they play in are actually a little further west than they are uh, in Chicago. I mean, Cole City's in the next door neighbor, and that's a little west, but Piatone is right out there, Hersher, Braidwood, Lyle, they're all right out in that, in that area where Wilmington is, and that's quite a bit further west of Chicago. We've seen Cole City at State in the past. And Cole City had one of the first nuclear plants. Are you aware of that? I was not. Yes, well, see. Got a field goal attempt here from Alan Richards from 32 yards. It's a little win behind him, and it's good. Alan Richards with his ninth field goal of the year makes it a 24-7 game. And Wilmington with a commanding lead with 3.05 to play here. Take another look at Alan Richards right down the middle. Thirty-three. Been the union labor for about 13 years. And it's just never the same thing twice. You know, it's a lot of different things. You're always doing different things. I enjoy joining up the union, join the brotherhood, have some backing for good wage, good insurance, retirement. And if it weren't for the union, I'll probably be, I'm not sure where I would be at. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Kick away to Isaac Turner, fielded at his own three. Brings it out 20 yards, 21 yards of the 24. Just a tick under three minutes to go in this one. That's been a big factor for Wilmington's defense. They've, they've really held Isaac Turner, who coming in this ballgame had 75 catches for 1,289 yards and 19 touchdowns. They've held him down to just a couple of catches. But part of that has to do with the rush that that defensive front of Wilmington has put on uh, Gajewski. Gajewski the fake. Nobody open. Reed was at the line of scrimmage and it falls incomplete. 
I mean, they've done the same thing to the running game, too. You know, it's just been a, an overall defensive masterpiece here for Wilmington in this game. Well, there really hasn't been any running game whatsoever for Nashville, and that's certainly when you're, when you're throwing the ball as much as they do, you've got to offset that by having a running game, and they've had nothing. In fact, for the most part, they haven't even attempted right. many runs. Well, <laughs> this Wilmington defense, as we mentioned, has been uh, pretty dominant all year. Round one against Julian, they allowed negative 78 yards in the first half. Gajewski looking for Reed. Another double coverage. Looks like Reed might have come down with it and the pass interference call at the 50-yard line. Pick up of 26. They'll decline the penalty, of course. One of the few completions on the day for Gajewski. Well, the last time for Nashville. The last time they did that pass, Lee, as you remember, was going the other direction. The same situation. They yeah. double teamed him. Penalty declines. Play results in a first down. They did the same exact play. It was, it was double coverage. He threw up a punt. Exact same thing right here. They pull him down. This time he caught it. Last time he didn't catch it, but it was interference. So they gained uh, yardage on both plays. Turner in motion now. Thrown wide. And there's a flag on the play. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask, number 60 offense. Just been that That's kind right of day for Nashville. Huh? Really has your right side of your screen right there. Just a little bit of frustration right there by the by the right tackle trying to do a good job of pass blocking and an aggressive job right there by the by the defensive end, Del Gilio. First and 25. Oh. And the sack. Nobody got in the way of big number 68, the All-Stater Nick Sanford. And that was just a bull rush where he just drove the tackle right back yeah. in. And it's actually one of the first times that uh, Goyeski has been sacked today. The only other times it's been forced passes quicker than he's wanted to. That's one of the first sacks. Here comes another rush. Gladson, complete, breaks a tackle, and gets down to the 35-yard line. Pickup of eight. Good play call there. Normally when you get such a hard pass rush coming from the outside and they're putting a lot of pressure on you, you want to go to the screen or the draw. And that's exactly what they did right there with the screen. As Wilmington, we the Wilmington defense, the, the offense has averaged 46 points a game in the postseason. The defense allowed 46 points total in the postseason. That's how dominant they've been defensively. Gajewski for Turner, caught at the 45. Out to the 50, his third catch, pickup of 15. So Gajewski with the completion there. Fourth down and about 11. So we're under a minute to play. Gajewski rolling left. Has a man at Schwarzkopf with the catch at the 33-yard line. So <laughs> Nashville's not content to just run out the clock or uh, let this one go yet. Good scrambling right here, keeping the play alive with his feet and finding an open receiver. I wouldn't say open when you got three defenders on him, but a good job by Gajewski. Gajewski looking for Turner. Turner wasn't looking for the ball. He was still had his back to the line when that ball came out. Part of the game plan for success 
for Nashville today, I think, was for Gajewski and Turner to hook up a lot more than they have. And I think that uh, Wilmington knew that from a coaching standpoint said, we're not going to let that happen. We're going to put a little more pressure on him. We're going to double-team Turner, and it's been very effective thus far. Second down. Gajewski had a couple of receivers down there, Reed and Turner, but it falls incomplete. And it looks like this magical run for Nashville is going to end, but man, <laughs> What a job they did the last three weeks, knocking off Bismarck Henning, a three seed, Pena, a two seed, and St. Teresa, a one seed. That last second field goal last week by Eduardo Garibay. That was a fantastic finish. And coming up next, Byron had a fantastic finish. They scored two touchdowns in the last minute of their game to house IC. That one's incomplete. Brings up fourth down. Well, it's always tough for a team that's come this far as Nashville has to be 12-1 and one and come into the championship game and probably not play your best. And the combination has been they really have not played as well as they have during the regular season, but you've got to attribute an awful lot of that to Wilmington's defense and, of course, how they've controlled the ball offensively. They've had a complete package, Wilmington, and uh, Nashville's been a little off in many parts of their game today. Fourth down play here. Gajewski looking for Turner just out of his reach. Now turn it over on downs, and Wilmington will run out the clock here. They were third back in 03. They were champs in 2014. And they're going to be state champs here again in 2021. Our Lyuna player of the game is Jacob Friddle, the 6'2", 185-pound senior with a monster game here today. A couple of touchdown runs. And just, I, don't, I didn't see how many carries he has, but he has been the workhorse today for Wilmington. 30 carries, we're told, on the day for Friddle. And he is our Lyuna player of the game. He was second on the team with 1,313 yards coming into today. 163 yards and uh, the two touchdowns today gives him 20 for the season. That's a pretty good state championship game right there, but I'm sure he'll be the first one to tell you that part of that yardage has, it has to go to Nick Sanford and Dominic Del Gio and Drake Imhoff and Brody Benson and Cade Hopwood up front. That front five for them that did most of that blocking all day long and all season long to lead to the success that Wilmington has had up and through today. Back in 2017, Steve Kazuzic looked at his team after a 56-13 loss to DuCoin and said, we got to get in the weight room and get stronger. And they did that. And four years later, they are in the championship game for the second straight time. They were here in 2019 as well. They're going to come up short here today, but a fantastic run for the Hornets, who will finish 12-2. and two. And Wilmington will run the table 14-0. As they down it. And the clock will just run out here as Wilmington will win the 2A state championship. So we, we talked about the contrast in styles, and so far the old school wing tee is 2-0. Oh. Well, it really has been the, the day of the old school offense. But you know what? It's been it's been that way defensively too, because you can't win ball games without a strong defense. And both these run teams that have won have shown really sound defenses. Wilmington shut out Julian in round one. They allowed seven points to Sterling Newman. Bishop Mack rolled up 25, and then Tri Valley last week held to 14. And the state champs hold Nashville to just seven points here today. And that Nashville offense was pretty potent all season long. Just could not get it rolling here today. 
And the Wilmington defense, the reason for that. 24 to 7, the final. Friddle with a touchdown run to start the scoring. Then it was Gajewski to Turner for a 40 yard touchdown to tie it in the second quarter at 7. Mensa, one yard touchdown run, made it 14 7. Wilmington at the half. There was no scoring in the third quarter. Friddle, the 34 yard touchdown run to make it 21 7. And then Richards, the field goal for the 24 7 final here. Wilmington, 14 0. And Jacob Friddle, one of the biggest games of his career, and it came at a perfect time. Let's go to Donnie Tillman. All right, thanks, Lee. Uh, how exciting does it feel right now? I never felt anything like this in the world, not in my whole life, and it feels great to be a champion now. It's all I ever wanted when I was a kid, and then finally came true my last year, and it was great. It's a great feeling. Talk about today, running in the trenches. You were able to get out a couple times and get to the end zone. Had to be a great feeling. Yeah, it was a great feeling. My line blocked great for me. They're down in the trenches, my big boys. I'm so proud of them, and it's, it feels great. It all feels great. Taking it all in. What does that crowd look like to you right now? It looks great. It looks great right now. I love the fans. I love Wilmington. It's a great atmosphere. And I wouldn't be anything without them. So it's great. Congratulations. Go be a champion. Thank you, sir. All right. You earned it. Lee, I'll send it back up to you. All right, Donnie. Great job. Thank you very much. Jacob Friddle, 163 yards today. He put up 127 against Bishop Mack in the quarterfinal. He had 117 yards against Tri-Valley, 163 today, 407 yards rushing for Jacob Friddle the last three weeks as he helps lead Wilmington to their second state championship, a 24-7 win today over Nashville. Back into DeKalb after this. It's here. The Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. These Mucklux ladies' boots are warm and comfortable and come in a variety of styles. They're only $19.99 each. Stock up on toys for the little ones. Assorted Barbie dolls are just $2.99 each. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in-store only while supplies last. Save big money at Menards. At Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. We know it's difficult to decide where to invest first each year. But your farm and family depend on it. We want you to have your most successful season yet. And that's why we've cataloged over 12 million corn plants and 20,000 germinating seeds. Whether you're just beginning to monitor equipment performance or fine tuning your equipment, our dealers are here to help. This is your year to know that you're doing the best you possibly can for your farm and your family. Jacob Friddle and the Wilmington Wildcats ecstatic after their second state championship in school history. A 24-7 win today over the sixth seed Nashville Hornets who uh, had a pretty magical run the last three weeks, but they see it come to an end here in the state championship game. Disappointing for them right now, but boy, every other team in the state would trade places with them to be here. Wilmington went on top early. It was a close game. It was a one touchdown game at the half. And they were just methodical. And then they bust one here, 19 yards for Jacob Friddle. Well, that offensive line for him all day long. It wasn't like they opened up holes for him at all. And a rare completion 
for Colton Gajewski. Unfortunately, he had such an outstanding year, but Wilmington just did not allow the Nashville offense to get going. This one-yard run by the quarterback who took over in week three, Ryder Metz did, when the uh, starting quarterback went out with an injury. And then it was Frittle again in the fourth quarter. The 34-yard touchdown run looked a lot like the 19-yard touchdown run, and plenty of reason for that young man to celebrate as he helps lead Wilmington to the 24-7 win. And the Nashville guys standing on the other side, all 11 starters on the defense, seniors, so a lot of seniors play their last game in a Nashville Hornet uniform today and pretty disappointed at this point but uh, memories of a lifetime as they will look back on their trip to the championship game a lot of them were here two years ago so uh, a pretty good run for Nashville and their program is on solid footing here the last few years under their ho uh, head coach Steve Kazuzik there's Craig Anderson, the head of the IHSA, handing off the trophy, which goes to the runners-up from Nashville. They finish 12-2 and two on the year. Lost their first game, lost their last game, didn't lose any in between. I'd like to be a fly on the wall listening to that conversation. Yeah, they, they see a couple of smiles down there, so it's not, uh, you know, I, I think they're able to put it into a little bit of perspective already, see well, what they've accomplished. Exactly. Back-to-back I mean, -back state championship games, nothing to sneeze at. Obviously, you want to win. You can't win it if you don't get here. That's right. Just unable to get going against that Wilmington defense. And uh, a lot of teams can say that this year. 14 of them will be exact. And get a good look at Coach Reitz and his team. There's Jacob Friddle getting his medallion. Big day for him. Big day for the, for the town of Wilmington. And now this year's state championship class 218 trophy will be presented to the Wildcats. 2A state champion, Wilmington Wildcats. Second championship trophy in school history in football back in 2014. And a year here in 2021. Heck of a run, 13-0 coming into today. 24 to 7 the final. Tony Cornish Jr. will be back and uh, we will hear from Jeff Reitz, the championship coach from Wilmington for Jack McInerney and our crew. I'm Lee Hall. So long for now. 3A state championship coming up after uh, we hear from Tony and the coach coming up after this. If you are currently working in the electrical industry and you're not receiving great wages, benefits, including guaranteed retirement income, paid health care, dental, vision, 401k, and more, we have positions open now with IBEW Local 34. Be a part of the electrical team on the front lines of the electrical revolution. Join us on the cutting edge of training in new electrical technology. Contact us today at IBEW34.org. Start your next project at Builder's Warehouse. We have over 15 colors of vinyl laminate flooring in stock, starting at $1.85 a square foot. Get it done at Builder's Warehouse on Southwest Washington Street or visit us online at bwpeoria.net. I got something special planned. I'm finally alone. The party has arrived. Let's just hope it ain't like the last time we was all out here together. We're all graduating and going off to different colleges. Why can't we just live in the now? Because it feels like I'm losing you.
Other dealers tell you why to buy from them. At Bob Grimm Chevrolet, we want our customers, like Chelsea, to share the day they experience the Bob Grimm way. Hands down, the best customer service I've ever experienced. We'll be customers for life. Make 2021 the year you drive away in a Chevrolet, the Bob Grimm way. Your car is more than just transportation. It's a gathering place. Your mobile community. At CephQ, we get that. So we offer car loans with great rates, flexible terms, and no hidden fees. We work with you to get the loan you need for the vehicle you want. Because getting there together is better than going it alone. CephQ, not a bank, better. And once again, and welcome back to Husky Stadium. What a championship run by Wilmington. 14-0. You have to feel good about that for those young men out there. And I'm watching them now behind me receive some of those medallions from recognizing that they are state champions from IHSA officials. And you can see the smiles lighting up the sky. Good to see here at Husky Stadium. A perfect 14-0 season. The two-time state champions now. Back in 2014 and 2021, they went in football and uh, Congratulations goes out to them. A lot more football coming up, but we want to stay focused on this Wilmington team right now. Donnie Tillman is standing by uh, on the field with the winning coach, and you can hear the teammates <laughs> behind me right now, that loud roar. They've all received their medallions and they're taking team pitches. But let's go to the field now and check in with uh, Mr. Tillman, who's standing by with one very happy coach. I'm with the head coach of the state champion Wilmington Wildcats. Coach, uh, a lot of emotion at the end of that game. How exciting is it to uh, bring that trophy home? Oh, hey, it's, a, it's an awesome experience. First and foremost, I want to uh, uh, congratulate uh, uh, Nashville with everything. Uh, you know, those guys played their hearts out, too. Uh, and, you know, we came out, we came out on top. Uh, uh, defensively, I thought we played really well against a very good offense. Uh, offensive line-wise, you know, the kids... Uh, uh, did a great job. I thought Jake Frill ran the ball very well today, and uh, we're, we're state champs. Unbelievable. Talk about running the ball. I mean, obviously, you know, you, you stuck to the game plan, and when you made big plays, you made them uh, hurt the Hornets. I mean, just to make that come through in the second half, to, to have that success as a head coach has to be uh, pretty exciting. Yeah, well, with us, it's what you see is what you get. And that's what we believe in. And, uh, you know, th this year's team really improved from game one till now. And so, uh, you know, I just, it, it was kind of a, 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 you know, kind of an open book there to how we were the whole season. We just kept wearing on you and wearing on you. Uh, you know, huge on special teams today. We got the one pump block to get, to get it in. But uh, we also know we beat a very good uh, Nashville team today. And uh, what, what's, what's tough about today is it's over. And uh, we don't have next week. But, uh, uh, you know, we, we did the best we could today. And we're very happy about things. Coach, let the celebration begin. I tell you what, I got, I got to tell you. To all my friends in Morris from Eureka and everybody in Wilmington, hey, and also to all the guy, all the guys in the Ice Conference, we wanted to represent the Ice Conference well today, and we're very happy. And go Cats! Congratulations. That is your state champion, head coach of the Wilmington Wildcats. I'll send it back to you. Thanks a lot, Donnie. Very happy coach indeed. Congratulations to all the Wilmington fans and boosters and alums here at Husky Stadium. An exciting time for that program and a great showing by them in this Class 2A state championship. Take a look at games on tap. A lot more football left to go, but of course in game one, Carrollton and Elena Win Lena Winslow were in the uh, spotlight. And uh, what about the Panthers? They win their fifth state championship in school history, 38-25 over the Hawks of Carrollton. Very explosive game. The offense has started hot. Defense came on, but Lena Winslow, a little bit too much firepower in the end. They win 38-25 again in the Class 1A State Championship. Now, game we just saw, Nashville and Wilmington. Game started off neck and neck. Both teams going at it before Wilmington finally surges. Closes things down really in the second half. Keeps Nashville off the board. They take home the 24-7 championship for Class 2A. Of course, we have Class 3 coming up in just a few minutes and tell you what it's going to be a great ball game two 13-0 teams going head to head for the top prize the Byron Tigers of course top seeded Toledo Unity also top seeded it's going to be a pretty exciting matchup for that class 3A championship starting right around four o'clock uh, here at Husky Stadium it's going to be pretty exciting we ask that you stay with us and of course later tonight can't forget about Sacred Heart Griffin and Joliet
State Catholic Academy, 12 and 1, 13 and 0. JCA, a lot of fans are going to be rolling in, of course, from both programs. It's going to be pretty exciting to see them in action as well. Again, the celebration goes on for Wilmington. They win the Class 2A state championship. A perfect season, 14 and 0 for the Wildcats. Congratulations to WHS. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. At Illinois State University,